Hi everyone and welcome to Nortec's mini VRF training class. I'm James McIntyre, the VRF training manager at Nortec. In this video series, I'm going to reintroduce you to VRF and discuss some of the finer points of installation and commissioning, focusing on the mini VRF system. The V5 mini VRF system is mainly used in residential and light commercial applications. Although they have a lot in common with their larger VRF sister systems, the installation is a little more straightforward. A mini VRF is a great standalone system and we found that they can be an excellent starting point for new VRF installers. I know you may have been hesitant in the past becoming involved with VRF for fear of them being complicated, and manufacturers have not always done the best job alleviating some of that worry. My goal with this video series is to pass on the tools that you need in a convenient video format, a format that at any time you can go back and rewatch even on site. Now let's begin. In a traditional system, the compressor is either on or off. In other words, it is either moving at heat at 100% or not moving any heat at all. This means that the system is operating at full capacity regardless of how little heating or cooling is needed. This is not the most energy efficient way to heat and cool a given space. Manufacturers have known this for years and many manufacturers of traditional equipment have tried to mitigate this inefficiency by staging multiple compressors. For example, some have tried to stage multiple compressors like in a 60-40 split, meaning that it can produce less than 100% capacity, but not really dial in to what is needed. This is similar in function to unloader type systems that effectively cycle on and off the pumping mechanism of the compressor relatively rapidly. The use of thermostatic expansion valves enable a system to achieve capacities closer to what is required but the compressor is still running at very close to its rated capacity. Finally, with the addition of multi-speed fan motors, the air can be slowed to reduce capacity. Taking all of these improvements and combining them with ever larger coils will give you a little more energy efficient, but much more expensive HVAC system. By far, the best, most energy efficient way of meeting load requirements is by varying the refrigerant flow. That's where VRF, or Variable Refrigerant Flow, gets its name. Using a combination of truly variable speed compressors and fan motors, coupled with electronic expansion valves, you'll have the most energy efficient solution in the HVAC industry. So we ask, what exactly is VRF? A VRF system is, of course, a heating and air conditioning system consisting of one or more outdoor units coupled with multiple indoor units. You can see an example below. Just to point out, the red line in the case of this heat pump type VRF system represents both a liquid and gas line. The system can increase or decrease the speed of the compressor as the system needs more or less refrigerant. Note that three of the indoor units are heating. As the overall system load increases, or as more units require a greater volume of refrigerant to heat or cool, the compressor speed will increase gradually meeting exactly the capacity that the space or building requires. In simpler terms, if I need more cooling, I get more cooling. If I need less, I get less, and my power bill is cheaper because of it. That makes me a happy customer. I've always been a technical person. I suppose that also makes me pretty skeptical. When I started in the VRF portion of this industry, I was skeptical then too. One of the questions I had at the time was, if this system is so great, why am I just now hearing about it? That was in 2008, it's been quite a few years ago. Let me ask you this, how long do you think VRF has been around? You folks remember Madonna and Michael Jackson on the radio? How about Ronald Reagan being president? E.T., the Apple II? Many of you weren't in HVAC back then, and some of you may not even been alive. Well, the first VRF system in the world rolled off the assembly line in 1982, a little over 35 years ago. The system design has gone through many improvements, much in the electronics department. If it's been around so long, and it's so great, why isn't VRF everywhere? Well, the short answer is that it is everywhere. VRF and inverter-driven ductless systems are some of the most common systems worldwide. If you've been overseas, you've seen similar products everywhere. Even as uncommon in the U.S. as we think it is, the U.S. ranks fourth in global markets for VRF. According to Building Services Research and Information Association, or BSRIA, we can expect an 11% growth rate yearly in VRF market share. 
Much of the market share gains, as you'd expect, are from small and medium-sized chillers, but we see great potential in all markets. For a visual representation, this is how 11% looks on a chart. Let's discuss the advantages of the VRF system. As we discussed, it is the most energy efficient HVAC solution. With a V5 VRF system, you have true zoning capability and the ability to meet partial load requirements, which leads to better comfort. Compared to many traditional HVAC solutions, the systems require less installation space. And finally, a V5 system's flexibility is hard to beat. In a traditional system, it operates at full capacity regardless of the changes in load. In a V5 VRF system, the system meets the load requirement throughout the day. The Department of Energy's Energy Star program estimates that 75% of the time, a properly designed system only needs to operate at 70% of its full capacity. This means that for the majority of the year, you do not need 100% of the capacity that a system can provide. We design systems in a way that amounts to a worst case scenario. With a VRF system, we can operate at 10%. That's real energy savings. In our VRF systems, we use nothing but digitally commutated inverter compressors. This gives us an advantage over traditional systems in that we can operate all the way down to 10% of the system's total capacity. In real world terms, a three ton unit can produce as little as 3600 BTUs if needed. Imagine a building where the load varies. In other words, where you might have a partial load from time to time. You're right, that's pretty much every building ever. Another advantage with all inverter DC compressors is the lack of locked rotor amps found with standard compressors. This means less stress on the equipment and less load on the building's electrical system. That also means that these systems are more easily integrated with generator and off-the-grid power. In addition to DC compressors, we use digitally commutated outdoor fan motors. These can be up to 40% more efficient than AC motors, and gives us the ability to proper subcool the refrigerant without the wear and tear of a fan cycle switch, for some of you techs out there. I said better comfort earlier. Here's an explanation. In a traditional system, there can be a fairly wide temperature swing. To make matters worse, what if that system's oversized? We've all had customers tell us that their space will be full of equipment or people, and it turn out not to be. That unit is now oversized and short cycling, which can cause high humidity and indoor air quality issues. In a VRF system, we're able to better meet the load needed, thereby limiting the effects of an oversized system. A VRF indoor unit can cool at a fraction of what it is rated. Can a traditional system do that? A V5 system has true zoning capability. What I mean by that is that each indoor unit can provide what a zone needs without negatively affecting system performance, like dumping air with a bypass damper. As a matter of fact, it raises its energy efficiency. In many applications, and some of you guys know this to be an unfortunate reality more so than others, it is next to impossible to run ductwork all over a building. This requires ceiling space that the sprinkler guys won't let you have, chase space that the electricians won't let you have, and so on. In a VRF system, it is entirely possible to heat and cool without the need for all of that duct work as we have many ductless style indoor units and small ducted units that need minimal duct work. An example of this can be seen here. I can carry 36,000 BTUs worth of heating or cooling via a 16 inch round duct or I can do the same with 3 8 5 8 line set. So I can get three tons to that impossible equipment room with low installation costs. Furthermore, by eliminating duct work, we're eliminating the energy losses that are inherent to duct work. So we've learned about the basic concepts of a VRF system. Let's take a look at the equipment. We'll start by looking at our indoor units. We offer many types of indoor units that should meet just about any application you can think up. Here we have the ductless style indoor units. Clockwise from the top, this includes the unit everyone thinks of when they think ductless, the wall-mounted indoor unit. Then we have the four-way ceiling cassette offered in a nominal 3x3, three three, a compact ceiling cassette in a 2x2 two two configuration, a two-way ceiling cassette, a console-style unit, and the universal floor ceiling model. Next we have the ducted units offered in low-static, high-static, and super-high-static models. 
For your fresh air needs, we have the fresh air processor. In the center is an interesting product. It's known as an AHU kit and provides the ability to tie in a traditional air handler or package unit into a VRF system. So how about that famous wall mount? I've seen these units used in every application imaginable. We offer this in capacities of 7, 9, 12, 18, and 24,000 BTUs. The units include a wireless remote controller. Next, the unit most popular in office spaces and perfect for drop ceiling applications, we have the 4-way ceiling cassette. It is offered in sizes ranging from 7 to 48,000 BTUs. The fan speed is adjustable for different ceiling heights, ensuring the perfect amount of airflow in a space. A wireless remote controller is included as well, and it has a built-in condensate lift pump designed to be piped into a common drain line. Next, we have the 2-way ceiling cassette. This unit is perfect for oblong or rectangular spaces that do not require full airflow in four directions, like hallways for instance. It is offered in 9, 12, 15, 18, and 24,000 BTU models. It too has an adjustable ceiling height, includes a wireless remote controller and a built-in condensate lift pump. To more easily fit into ceiling grids, we have the compact four-way ceiling cassette. It is offered in smaller capacities than its counterpart at 7, 9, 12, 15, and 18,000 BTUs. Because of the applications I've seen time and again, where a unit like this one would have been perfect, it is my personal favorite. Perfect for radiator type and knee wall installations, we have the console style unit. Offered in 7, 9, 12, and 18,000 BTU models, it is for smaller applications, but its flexibility means it can be used in spaces other units can't. Think back to all the times you've seen a wall mount installed a foot off the floor. This is a unit that should have been used instead. An interesting and flexible unit with excellent air throw, we have the universal floor and ceiling unit. As its name suggests, it can be installed either at the floor, on a wall, or directly onto the ceiling. I've seen this style installed in equipment rooms that need cooling thrown as far as possible due to space constraints, like a cold aisle. It is offered in sizes ranging from 9 to 48,000 BTUs. Now for the ducted units. We start with the low static ducted unit. Used for zones that require less capacity and airflow, it is offered in 9, 12, 14, 18, and 22,000 BTU capacities. It has an adjustable static pressure up to 0.12 inches of water column. It includes a built-in pump, and as with all ducted units, it includes a wired remote controller free of charge. A wireless kit is also available. For more traditional applications, we offer the high static ducted unit, available in sizes ranging from 18 to 48,000 BTUs. It has an adjustable static pressure of up to 0.4 inches of water column. A built-in pump and wired controller is included as well. For applications where you could use a static pressure of up to 0.8 inches of water column, we have the super high static ducted unit offered in 12 sizes ranging from 7,000 to 54,000 BTUs. Keep in mind that you wouldn't be using the 54 in a mini VRF system. Now for the largest indoor units, we offer the 72 and 96,000 BTU large high static ducted unit. They have an adjustable static pressure of 0.8 inches of water column and include a wired controller. Although we'd like to see more zones and less ductwork, we recognize the need for a more traditional style indoor unit, and these are often used in retrofitting existing applications using only the 6-ton VRF unit or larger, of course. With the AHU kit, we can incorporate an existing or new air handler or package unit into a VRF system. Offered in 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16-ton models with adjustable capacities for each, in the most basic terms, it is an accessory that contains a board, some sensors, and an electronic expansion valve that makes a regular unit a VRF indoor unit. Interesting thought, right? Now let's look at our V5 Mini VRF outdoor units. One outdoor unit we offer is our standard Mini VRF. Sized in 3, 4, and 5 ton, we're able to cool at an ambient temperature anywhere from 23 degrees to 118 degrees and heat from negative 4 to 80 degrees. We can serve up to 10 indoor units with the 5 ton. Our newest unit, and a very exciting one to boot, is the Ultra Heating V5 Mini VRF. It is offered in 3 and 4 tons, serving up to 7 indoor units. 
It can cool at an ambient range from 50 to 129 degrees and heat all the way down to negative 22. More specifically, it is rated to provide 100% capacity at negative 4 degrees and 80% capacity at negative 22, all the while running at up to 20 and a half sear. This system can eliminate the need for backup heat for large portions of North America. We have many types of accessories, both required and optional, so that we can distribute refrigerant to and from multiple indoor units. We use specially engineered Y branch kits. These kits vary in size and configuration depending on your piping size. A heat pump kit includes two Y branches. To answer a common question, no, you cannot make your own or use a T instead. So how do we control these units? Well, we offer the wired remote controller, also known less accurately as a thermostat in the center. You can call it whatever you want. On the left, we have the wired controller used often in hotels as it is compatible with a key card function some of you may have seen. In the bottom right, we have the wireless controllers either included with ductless style indoor units or as an option for ducted units. In the top right, we have our central controller offered in models capable of operating 32 or 255 zones, depending on the needs of the job site. It is a touchscreen controller with just about every function you need to centrally control a system. Finally, we offer both Modbus and BACnet gateways for controlling and monitoring systems remotely. Let's take a look at designing a mini VRF system. You know how to perform a heat load calculation, right? Well, you're still doing that going room by room or zone by zone. You know that from the heat load calculations, you have to consider items like solar load, occupancy schedules, like when people will use a particular zone, and heat producing electronics or other equipment. If you were to lay out nearly any building, you know that some zones are affected more by solar load and others are not. The zones most affected by solar load are known as perimeter zones. Zones that aren't affected as much by the sun are known as interior zones. So that we can get even more accurate with our load calculations, we further divide the perimeter zones based on their orientation. For instance, you'll have to consider that in the northern hemisphere, the south zone will bear the brunt of most of your solar load, barring trees or other types of cover. For your interior zones, although not nearly as affected by solar load, you still have to consider the heat load of people and equipment. Have you ever been in a fully packed auditorium or place of worship and notice that everyone is just burning up. That's because the maximum capacity was not considered in the heat load calculations. Now, finish your heat load calculations for those rooms and figure out which capacity fits best. For example, if you calculated a space needing 14,000 BTUs, you'd select a 15 or 18,000 BTU unit. You'll need to look at air distribution, like how you decide where vents need to go. It's no different with the VRF system. If you choose to go ductless, for instance, choose a unit that will distribute the air more, most efficiently, keeping in mind the limitations of installation location. Although not something that most HVAC people consider for the sake of our customers, we have to consider aesthetics, or how the unit might look on a wall or ceiling. If it looks like you'll need more than one system, or you have a building with very different zone needs in terms of capacities, you'll divide those zones into common load profiles. Simply put, I can either heat or cool with a given heat pump system. So, if I had an equipment room that will require cooling year round, I'll need to consider providing a separate system for it, just like you would with traditional equipment. In nearly all residential applications, we'll need either heating or cooling for the entire house. One thing to consider in all applications is a building's load diversity or the capacity requirements from, for zones or groups of zones. In this beautiful drawing of a two-story house, I may require five tons of total capacity, but can I reduce equipment costs by undersizing the outdoor unit to a four ton? Of course I can. In this simplified example, we have bedrooms upstairs and living spaces like a den and kitchen downstairs. Do I always need 100% of my capacity upstairs during the day when those rooms aren't in use? Unless I have angsty teenagers, I may not. I can simply increase the set point upstairs so that I require less capacity. This could mean that I only need two tons upstairs and downstairs. 
meaning I'm operating at only up to four tons. In real life, however, I probably won't even need that to maintain the set point. Once the sun goes down, it cools off outside, decreasing the heat load. The family is now ready to retire to bed, so they increase the set point downstairs. Not only does my system automatically adjust to load requirements, I can realize even more energy savings by adjusting the set point in spaces that require less capacity. Now, because we like to keep it cool upstairs while we sleep, I still need two tons upstairs, but only one ton downstairs. This means my system in the example is only operating at 75% capacity, at the most. Again, in real life, there's a great chance I'll need a fraction of that. Load diversity requirements are worth explaining to your customer. They may choose to go with a larger unit, just in case the entire house does not need full capacity. What if the customer does a lot of entertaining, or they have a large family and they require full capacity on the hottest and coldest days of the year? This is usually not the case, but it is definitely an opportunity to let your customer make an informed decision, and if they're willing to pay for a larger system for the worst case scenario, I'm sure we'd all be happy to sell it to them. There are only a couple of other design considerations. Do not forget to order other accessories you'll need, like a pad, disconnects, access panels, condensate pumps, etc. We offer a lot of these through Partner's Choice. For an easy design, use our VRF selection software. This generates a really nice report to give to your customer, including piping links, a list of equipment, and it has all of the rules for design built in. This eliminates much of the headaches of a manual design. A simple description of using the software is that you enter your building's design information, your indoor unit information, and piping links. The software would take everything you enter and choose your outdoor unit size, the piping sizes, and the model numbers for the Y branches you need. Tune in to edgetechhvac.com for a VRF selection software how-to video. That's it for the introduction to mini VRFs. Tune in to edgetechhvac.com for more videos in this series and on other technical topics.